Hey everybody, Lars here. Time for the first review video for Big Bad Unit 3. Only Unit 3 isn't that big and bad. Uh, it's a three-week unit, not a two-week unit. So basically it breaks down to what we're going to look at today really quickly. Hopefully this is going to be a quick one. We're going to look at functions. And then the second one, we're going to look at file I.O. And then the third one, we're going to look at libraries and modularity and how you can have your code to a bunch of different places and still use it. But today, we're going to do a quick hit and we're going to look at functions. Um, there's probably going to be some other supplemental videos as well. One that goes over the Project Euler number six using functions. One that goes over a sample homework problem. Because as you know, the Unit 3 homework is big and comprehensive. And I don't want people to be like, ah, you know, freak out because it's bigger than most. So I, I give you something that serves kind of as an example. Today, what we're going to do today in the past, this would be a long drawn out video because we go over functions and then I would rewrite Euler and we talk about a whole different stuff, blah, blah, blah. But over the years, I've rethought it and I'm not going to do Euler today. I'm going to wait until we're done with all of the, the slide videos and then do it at the end because that way I can not only rewrite it using functions, I can rewrite it using libraries if we wait until we've done the third part. So that's what we're going to do. So hopefully today is going to be a fairly quick hit. Basically what I did, I already set up some code, but not really. I just set up a shell program here called Funks. And what we're going to do right off the bat is I'm just going to create a list. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And what I'm going to show you is print. I wonder how thin that is because I'm using the new 3.7 in the font here for the and the IDE isn't as thick as it usually is. Um, I'm going to print some of my list, and what's going to happen as we do that? I'm going to save and run. That's going to tell me 30. Is you're going to see that we've been using functions all along. We use two right there because print is a function. You know, we're we have the name of it and then inside the parentheses we have what's called our argument or our parameters and then it has a return value. In the case of the print, we print the answer. Sum is also a function here. What we're giving sum is that list of numbers or what you'll learn later is sum takes what's called an iterable, anything that you can iterate over. And it sums up everything in that iterable and gives you the number. So we've had we've been using functions all along, but now we're going to get into them. And we're going to understand them. When we think about functions like the anatomy of a function, we think of its name, and then in this case print or sum. We think about what the arguments for Sometimes there are no arguments. If you've gone through the slides, you'll, you'll know when I print those silly lyrics from Detroit Rock City, there's no argument when I call that function. I just basically want to call it and have a list of things to do. So some have arguments, some don't. Here, <coughs> we happen to be using two functions that do have arguments. The argument for sum is my list because we want to give it an iterable to sum up. And when that answer comes back, 30, it's the argument for print. You have to tell the print you know, function, what you want to print when you do that, okay? So we're already using functions. They kind of come along. Let me go here. And I am going to Google Python docs built-in functions, built-in fictions, built-in functions. And then when I click on that, you're going to see Python has built-in functions there already waiting for you. Okay, and we've already used a lot of them. We used int for casting. We've used input. Uh, we're going to use open for file I/O in this unit. Um, we've range, which is actually a generator. We will have all of those things available to you right when you start Python. Okay, we're going to learn later in this unit that there is another kind where they're in libraries and we have to import them from libraries in order to use them. But these, we don't have to. They're built in. They're ready, waiting for us to use. Okay? And you can see I use sum and I use print in the example we just did. Okay? Python documentation is your friend. I know I'm going to sound like my parents again, but when I was a kid, we didn't have the internet. We had to buy books and we had to look this stuff up in books. You had to make sure you had decent books. You had to either go to a library and the library never had decent computer books. What you had to do is you ended up going to the bookstores like Walden Books or Barnes & Noble. And 
go into the computer section, which at the time was vast, and you would pick out a book and you would look something up. You would use the bookstore as a library. I digress. All right, let's go back to our code here. So we've been using functions all along, but the idea of this video is to give you a look at how we're going to create our own functions. So let me zot to this code out. And we're going to create a function of our very own. What I usually do in this instance is I create a silly little function called multi-cube. And what multi-cube is going to do is multi-cube is going to take two parameters, A and a B, and it's going to multiply them together, and then it's going to return the cube of that product. Okay? You can see what I've done here is I've said def, D-E-F. And that's short for definition, and that's what we put in when we want to define a function. So I say def, I say multi-cube, we give them the parameters, you'll understand this in a second when we run it, and then I give it a colon because I want to start a code block. Everything in that code block is going to basically be my function. Okay. So when I call the function, I'm going to call it with two numbers, integers in this case I'm guessing, and... It's going to say a, b. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called z, and I'm going to assign z the product of a and b. And then I'm going to return, not retrun, I type retrun a lot. And then I'm going to return z, but I don't want to just return z. I want to cube it. Okay? And then that's going to be my little function. So then, what a lot of programmers used to do back in the day is you'd define your functions, then you'd get to the bottom and you'd have your main program, okay? And for the main program, I'm just going to print uh, multi-cube, and I'll do 2 and 2, okay? So now, if I do multi-cube 2 and 2, what's going to happen? When I call it, it's going to come up here, multi-cube A is going to be equal to 2, and B is going to be equal to 2. Okay, so when I get to this line, z is assigned a times b, so that would be 4, so z is 4. Return 4 cubed, so what's that? 4 by 4 is 16, and 16 by 4 is what? 64? I hope it was the last time we did this. still is. Okay, so we get 64. So that's basically what happens. You do 2 and 2. It calls the function, so when I called it here... It took these two values and it put them in those two variables. And then we ran through it, okay? Now, you might be saying, okay, what's the big deal? Why couldn't I have just figured that out from Jump Street? The big deal is this. Copy. Oh, why is this not working? Okay, there we go. The big deal is this. Without having to rewrite the code, I can now do as many numbers as I want. Okay? And I don't have to rewrite that logic for every single example. Now I can just say, hey, I've got this multi-cube thing licked. I can, I can throw it up here and give it to that. Now I can do a bunch of multiple print lines like that. Or, and this is where the real power comes in. I can say for i in range, let's say 10. Um... Print multi cube two comma i. Okay, and then what's going to happen? It's going to use that number as it iterates and go right, and it'll it'll do it for all of those different values right up and down the line. See, I start with the zero, then I do the one. Okay, two and one is three. Three cubed is eight. Okay, or two cubed is eight. And you go up the line like that. Okay, 10 is the first thing I don't want. So if I want to go from 1 to 10, I'll do it like that. Remember, we're still practicing and we're still learning. Okay. So that's the power is that I don't have to rewrite all my logic. And I don't have to redo my logic again. It's all up there. And it's all waiting to be reused. Okay. Now, there's two little things that we have to look at when we consider this. I'm going to zot out that. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do a simple print and I'm going to say multi cube 2 comma 3. Okay? And we're going to run that and it's going to say 216. And everything is good in function land. Okay? Now, what if I do that? The pregnant pause. 
for you to figure it out yourself. I print multi-cube. I have a 2 and a 3. I come up to the function. 2 is a, b is 3. So I multiply them together. 2 and 3 is 6. So z is assigned the value of 6. I return 6 cubed. So 6 times 6 is 36. 36 times 6 is 216. 216 is what gets returned in here and then printed by the print function. Okay. So now I have print z. Well, when I come up here and I look at z, what happened? z was just cubed here. It wasn't changed. So z was assigned a times b. So z should be 6, right? So what happens when we run this code? You think it's going to work? Mm-hmm. It's not. Watch. Boom. You blow up. You get an error, and it comes down here, and it says name z is not defined. And you're like, what? Not defined. It's right there. What does that mean? This is what it means. <coughs> this is an instance in programming that we call scope. Okay? When you create a function and run a function, that def right there is telling Python, hey, go put this in memory because we're going to go use it later. Okay? When somebody calls the name of it multi-cube, it's kind of just like a variable. Naming functions, you actually use the same conventions as you do with variables. Newsflash, they're all the same thing. Back when, when we were little kids, they used to just call them handles. And it's all the same thing. It just points to a, a space where either your variable is or the beginning of your function is or whatever. That's all variables do. All right? I don't want to let you know the behind the scenes. Stuff. I don't want to get in trouble with the other programmers by teaching you all the secret stuff. All right? But that's all it is. It's just a variable name. In that case, it happens to be multi cube. <coughs> anyway, it's defined and it's stuck in memory, okay? So when I say print multi cube 2, 3, what happens? This code gets put in a little area of memory and it gets run. The A is the 2, the B is the 3. It does that, figures out the return value should be 216, and then it returns the value. But you know what happens then? The memory gets cleared out. Once this is done, and once it runs, and it sends back that value, oof, it goes away. It's gone. It's out of memory. Okay? Think of it as a little mini program. You asked for something, it ran, it gave you the result, and then that little mini program is gone. So right now, I say print Z. Python doesn't know what Z is because this is out of memory. It was run already. Okay? Now, what I often do is this. If I want to print Z in here, well, that's fine. Because I'm in that scope when I'm doing it in the function. See, what happens is when we're down here and we're running code and programming language, that's called global space. I can see everything at the top level, okay? When I'm here inside of a function and this would be run off to the side, I'm in what's called local space, okay? So if I'm in local space, I can refer to all of the local variables and the globals because that's why they're called global. Everything can see it. Okay. When I'm in global space, I can't see local because local is gone. Local isn't running at that point. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zots that out. And now when I rerun, I'm fine. I can print the six when I'm in the function. That's not a hassle because it can see it because the scope is right because I'm in local space printing a local variable. So the scope is okay. But if I'm out of here in the global space and I try to print something local, I'm out of scope. I'm in the wrong the wrong place to do that because that function's already been run. And this isn't some secret way to show to make you understand what's going on. That's actually what's going on. When you run a function, a little stuck in a different part of memory, runs the function, sends back the value, boom, and then gets cleared out. That's exactly that's what happens. That's exactly what happens when these things run. Okay? So I'm gonna actually zots that out, but I'll leave this here so that when you get the code, because I will put this up in Canvas eventually. You can see that, okay? Now, that's so scope. Remember scope. You do something locally, and then that function returns its value. The, all those things inside are gone. So if you want to do something with those internals, you either got to do it right there in local space, or you've got to make sure and take that value and get it out of the function, okay, and send it back as a return value. So the second thing we want to do is this. What if I... Just did that. Anything going to happen? Is there going to be an error? Is the program going to explode? Is my computer going to explode? 
Let's find out. Probably hope my computer doesn't explode. All right, it runs. There's no compile error, but nothing happens. There's nothing there. What's going on here is that we've run the function. Everything is great, but the value was returned, and we didn't do anything with it. Okay, you have here what's called a fruitful function. It returns something. There's a value that comes back from it. And what you need to remember is that when you have fruitful functions, you need to capture the value. Now, there's two things or two ways we can do that. The one that I usually tell people to do is set it equal to a variable, and then you have it. Okay, 216. Then my var, I have it. I can print it as many times as I want. I can take it and use it in another uh, context. I can take it, use it in arithmetic. I can play around with it, blah, blah, blah. That's the best way. Uh, memory, we're lousy with memory right now, so it's not a big deal that you're using up a memory space. Who cares? When you have a fruitful function, it's a good idea to capture it as a, val as a variable. But as you also saw, we can just print it too. That's kind of a way of capturing it. Let's say I'll do 2-2 two, two here. And now when we run that, you can see the 64 prints out. So it is useful because it, it's an output. And at least we're taking that value and we're putting it out where people can see it. Okay? So while we might not be capturing it in a, val in a variable, we are putting it out where people can see it. And you can do something with it, okay? Because if you run that function, and some functions just run, and they do their tasks, and that's all they're meant to do. And that's fine. But here we have a fruitful function. There's a return value. I'm returning the cube of Z. So I want to capture it. I want to print it out, or I want to put it in a variable and do something with it along those lines, okay? So that's the simple basics of functions. Let me, I'm going to get a grand finale here. It's not going to be the greatest shakes in the world, but you know what? It's better than nothing. There we go. I'm going to save that, and that is the code that you're going to get when I load things up on Canvas. And there you go. So you can see that right there. Okay? So that's the basics of functions. When you create your own functions, you use the def keyword. You can see idle made it orange there. And then you give it a name. The name has pretty much the same conventions as regular variable names in Python. You can have arguments. They're optional, but if you want to bring data in to do something with it, you give your argument list and then you do a colon because we want to create a code block and that's going to become our function. Then functions have a return value. They don't have to, but the ones that do are fruitful functions. Okay, You want to make sure you capture those. And then you can just run the function name with the numbers you want or with you can use strings or you can pass in objects later and you can do whatever you want. And then you can have that functionality saved. So you don't have to type it in a bazillion times. There's the only place we have to do multiplication and then exponentiation is right there. Everywhere else, all we're doing is calling the function, okay? And then you can use it in multiple calls. You can stick it in a loop. You can do whatever you want. Two things that we need to be aware of when we're using functions and things like that is scope, okay? When you're doing something inside your function, you're in a local space. And if you want to refer to those variables, you can. But once you send back that return value, all of that goes out of memory. So when you're in global space, don't refer to anything that was in local function space, okay? Because the program's not going to see it. It's almost like it's like, hey, you know, go get me a pizza. And then somebody goes and drives to the block, down the block, uh, five blocks north, three blocks east, and goes to a particular pizza place, buys the pizza, then comes back the same way, and then brings back the pizza. Well, the person who asked for the pizza doesn't know where the pizza place is doesn't know the directions to the pizza. Well, it doesn't care. They ask for a pizza, they got a pizza. That's all that matters. So they're, they don't care about the details. At the end of the day, that's what local space is. It's the details. Who cares about the details? We got the answer. And, it, and it's correct. So we got the good answer there. Okay? Be weary of scope. Because at first it's slightly confusing, but it's not. If you just think of a function as a little mini program that goes away when it's done and sends back its answer, that's it. That's all you got to remember. Okay, so if you try to refer to something there, programmers will say it's out of scope. Okay, probably a good word to remember for a quiz, wink, wink, nod, nod. Okay, then the last thing, and we've already mentioned it before, is if you have a fruitful function, you're going to want to capture the value. Okay, you're going to want to make sure if something's coming back from a return, vari return value, you capture it in a variable or you, you print it out. So at least you can see it and at least you're using it in some way. All right, all right, so... You got this one. This is the review video for the first part of the slides for Unit 3. A couple days, we're going to drop the one on file I.O.
So we start talking about using files for your data, bringing it in and then writing output files so you can write out. And then lastly, you're going to get a third video where we're going to talk about modularity and libraries and importing from different libraries and then creating your own libraries so that you can have libraries of code. And then when you write a program, you can access all of those different things. OK, and then it's unit three. So there's probably going to be a couple of side videos. Uh, one will be a sample homework problem that resembles the homework that we're going to have for Unit 3. Another is going to be taking all of the new things that we've learned in Unit 3 and rewriting that Euler 6 so that we're using functions, we're using libraries, and we're doing a bunch of different stuff. We're also going to look at something called list comprehensions, which is a cool way to fill lists with numbers just by pretty much putting formulas in the brackets. We'll see that stuff. I don't want that stuff to make you nuts. That's more of a parlor trick than anything else, but we'll have some fun with that stuff down the line, all right? All right, then I'm getting out of here. You be good, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.